Recording in progress. All right. So kindly position yourself at where, um, if there is noise at your background, place yourself in a place so that you will not disturb us from your end. And um, we we have our invited guests joining us. All right, it's exactly five o'clock PM GMT, wherever you are. Um, it's six o'clock from my end, and I guess um, Dusan will be saying different thing, and Marco also will be joining us, who also have different time. And um, I mean, that is the good thing about timing. So uh, we will start, and before we will start, we will just go through some few housekeeping rules. We have some students, some special students with us. So that is why we have the caption that you can read. So please, you can enable so that you can read. Um, sometimes it's, I mean, it's really well. Sometimes too, there are some few errors, but still you can make meaning of whatever thing that we are saying. So please make good use of uh, that. Um, please, when you join, kindly mute yourself. Use the reactions to draw my attention so that I will call you if you have any questions or when we call on you, then you can then unmute yourself, then you can get into the discussion mode. 
All right. Um, I will formally welcome you all for our first maiden meeting where we are meeting with all our registered participants together with our invited guests, the GCRC team, our point of contact who have been working so much and playing all the good roles for us and all the space enthusiasts joining us this evening, afternoon, morning, wherever you are joining us. We are super excited to have you all here today. And we believe and hope that you will have exciting session today. Without wasting much time, um, if the host, can we um, check if we have Dr. Nanama Brown Kluche online? Yeah, I'm here. All right, great. Yeah, so um, yeah. it is indeed a privilege to have Dr. Nanama Brown Kluche, who will be giving us the keynote address. So Dr. Nanama Kluche Brown, um, she is a convener, a moderator, um, the research symposium, colloquia. I mean, she's almost everything and you see her almost everywhere. She holds a PhD in climatology from the University of Cape Town, South Africa. Her research focuses on climate modeling. Uh, please, can you mute yourself so we don't get the feedback from the host? All right, so um, please, host, kindly be checking on that so you can, you can yeah. mute anyone who is disturbing us. Okay. All right, thank you so much. All right, so Dr. Nanama holds a PhD in climatology from the University of Cape Town, South Africa. Her research focuses on climate modeling, climate impact assessment on society. She has worked on both national and international projects and consultancies, including the climate and health projects in Ghana and the ongoing global yeah, climate environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She is lead author in working group one panel for climate change seek assessment reports. She has co-authored a good number of journals, article publications, and academic books to her credit. Of course, I mean it's very um, uncountable. You can you can talk about so much um, that Dr. Nama has done. Yeah, so um, Dr. Nama supervises students research in Ghana and abroad at master's and PhD levels. Uh, she also serves as an external examiner for University of Ghana. She dedicates her life for community services, mentors, young men and women for education pursuits, self-confidence and self-motivation. She also trains professionals in etiquette and assertiveness. As part of her service to give back to the society, she is a motivation speaker and articulates effectively on all platforms. At her leisure time, she spends time with children with learning disabilities. In fact, I can go on and on and on and on and on. And I believe some of us are, um, we've all benefited immensely from Dr. Nanama Brown. So it is with great pleasure to call on Dr. Nanama Brown Kluche to give us the keynote address. Doc, take over now. Thank you. Thank you, Kinsley, for this um, nice introduction. Um, I believe I can share my, my slide. Yes, please. Yes, so um, the... screen. No, you have to let me. Oh, yeah. Um, so thank you for the introduction. I will be talking on space science activities in Ghana. And I will also give talk one slide on what I've been doing to support the youth. OK, very good. To all support, right, yeah, um, yeah, I see now. I'm able um, to yeah, all right. Um, Bila, can you? Yes, all right, thank you. So I'm, I'm able to share, thank you. To support the youth um, uh, into space science. So. Um, now, I think you can see my slide. As Kinsley had said, I'm a senior lecturer at the physics department of the University of Ghana. I'm also the Ames Canada researcher. So I shuttle between Rwanda and Ghana and every other country uh, based on the assignment I, I hold at the moment. So um, I'll go straight to the point. I mean, this, I was given five to 10 minutes, so I think I won't have to spend too much time on this. 
um, space science activities. I'll start with astronomy. Um, we do uh, astronomy science research um, with the Ghana Radio Astronomy Observatory, we call it uh, GRAU. And we have also the, the Ghana Radio Astronomy Clubs for schools. We have radio astronomy public engagement. So we we'll do um, different public engagement with the media. We have one PhD student graduated in 2019 uh, from, uh, so with astronomy from the University of Ghana. We have one who should be graduating soon. In fact, uh, last month she uh, defended her her PhD viva. So we hope that the next graduation of the university should be graduating this year. And so we have graduated in Ghana from the soils of Ghana who we'll have two PhD graduates. We have the DARA program, uh, the DARA and the New Team Fund program that preparing students for postgraduate studies because we don't have um, astronomy programs at the undergraduate levels in our universities in Ghana. And so the DARA Newton Fund program is to um, put students who have a uh, first degree in physics, mathematics, statistics, and a few from biology, depending on their interests, preparing them to a level where they can take postgraduate studies in astronomy. So there have been a number of cohorts. I think it's run once or twice a year and we have the next cohort, which is open now and the deadline for application will be 23rd of July. So if there are students among you in level 400 during national service or those who are, if you want to do their postgraduate studies in astronomy, they can sign up, register for this um, training. It's a one year, very flexible uh, training program. The deadline is on 23rd July. And we have also DARA fund for postgraduate studies in universities abroad. And we have a lot of Ghanaians who have benefited from that. We have the SKA bursaries for postgraduate studies. So it's astronomy and space sciences. So these are generally for astronomy and space sciences. We have the schools outreach program, which um, Kinsley is also a part of, and many other young Ghanaians are a part of, we call it PRASA. So that supports um, schools to learn more about astronomy. In terms of um, our human development, I would say since Ghana decided to try or to go into space, uh, we've had this post that came out um, three days ago. I saw it on uh, the African Post website. You can check it up, africanpostonline.com. And I saw that our own colleague has, uh, has become the Ghana's first astronomer. So this is very motivating for the young people that look, astro people we call astronomers do not always come, must come from outside of Ghana. We can also have astronomer in Ghana. So Bernard is, um, he works with the Ghana Space Science and Technology Institute and he was trained in South Africa. So that's very encouraging. We've had a lot of research with the, the Ghana Radio Astronomy Observatory with the conversion of the radio telescope into a very long baseline interferometry that is uh, capable of doing radio communication with, um, with stars and you know what I mean out there. We've had the first epoch of methanol mazes from the Kuntusi. So Kuntusi is the location, is a place where the radio telescope is located. And we are able to catalog the mazes for the first time in Ghana. We've had dust in nearby major remnant radio galaxies also. We've had research into, into that. Um, in terms of Earth observations, we have a number of institutions within the country that is um, doing Earth observation. We have the All Nations University College. They were the first to design and launch satellites called GanaSat-1. The first to design uh, the University Amateur Sat Ground uh, Receiving Station. They have deployed educative satellites, the CANSATs, they launched it. 
And then we have the Aeronet ground station, which has uh, is doing uh, taking measurements in collaboration with with NASA. University of Energy and Natural Resources are also doing Earth observation studies. And then, of course, GSSTI, the Ghana Space Science and Technology Institute, also doing a lot of research into um, space science and astronomy. University of Ghana, we have the GMES project of the uh, African Union, uh, looking at the coastal it's Earth observation, looking at the coastal uh, environments. And then we have also some climate research, which I lead at the University of Ghana. And we have kinds of research as well within the university in terms of um, climate and space science. Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology has the aerospace engineering, they have metrology and climate program as well. And then we have Ames Ghana that has introduced the climate change and atmospheric physics um, program. And there's also a focus on space weather with Ames Ghana. So these are all happening in Ghana. This is a detailed research which we have done using space technology. So we have used Earth observation to be able to locate an appropriate Boy, area for <laughs> landfill in Greater Accra. This is, um, should I say, a research of need in every country because all countries struggle with waste management. And so if we are able to use space technology, to be uh, to site an area where we can dump landfill or we can dump, should I say, waste, and it will have a uh, uh, sanitation impact on, on the people. Then this is uh, an area everybody will have to go into to help us to do our waste management. So we have done that and uh, we have published this um, papers. So and we have had a visit of the president of the International Astronomical Union, which was a big thing for us in Ghana. It, she came in 2019, just before um, COVID, <laughs> COVID showed up. We have the Ghana Planetarium Science Center that organizes seminar series for the public and also for school. So we have the kids also taking care of at the Ghana Planetarium Science Center. Um, we have, as a Ghana, as a country, contributed to the Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change, the Special Report on Global Warming of 1.5 degrees Celsius. We have had um, contribution also to UNFCCC, Ghana, Ghana reports um, frequently the, the climate situation of the country and, of course, Earth observation as well. Um, we have coordination challenges with our space science activities in the country. So we have had activities that are isolated. People do things by themselves and we kind of don't not talk to each other. So different institutions applying space science and using space science data work in isolation. And that is a big challenge for us because we cannot- uh, uh, Michael, <laughs> Okay, so the big, the big news that is soon coming up is that we have the space, the Ghana space policy prepared and it's ready to be submitted to, to, to cabinet. Two days ago, I was in a technical meeting and the Minister of Science, the current Minister of Science was there and he promised to take expertise action on this for cabinet approval. So he was happy to hear a lot of the benefits Ghana stands to gain from space science. So he promises that he's going to move very fast on uh, getting approval for Ghana to have the space policy approved and implemented. So I don't need to go through this. Uh, maybe time will not allow because we want to promote well-coordinated and monitored space program in the country. It will be implemented um, mostly by, so now the policy will then establish a space sign, the Ghana Space Agency, which will then give us the liberty to control or coordinate programs in the country. And we'll also pushing for the establishment of the Space Science and Technology Development Fund that will make our life very easy for us in the country. Now on the Ghana, CanSat Rocketry Championship. 
we expect competitors to present innovative solutions to developmental challenges. And we try and make people dream bigger and develop their entrepreneurial spirit. So this is what we expect from a rock country championship. My role in getting the youth involved is just a few bullet points. Uh, try to support as much as possible initiatives from the youth. I teach, I mean, that's the fundamental one I teach. And then I give recommendations to programs, schools and all that. And I relate very well with, with the youth. And I give introductions, uh, connecting people here and there in programs. And then I also encourage a lot of the youth in action. Thank you. And I'll encourage that you get in touch. This is my email address. You can always drop me an email and then we take it from there. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Anamo Brown. Uh, it's always exciting to hear from you. I, I call her mother for all because immediately you call on her. She's always willing to come to our aid. And uh, she touched on some few things and opportunities out there that we the youth can make good use of. And um, one thing that was very dear to me was the programs which is ongoing, which is the DARA, it's the Development in Africa with Radio Astronomy. And um, I'm, uh, I'm a beneficiary from this program. So please, if you are interested in astronomy, astrophysics, kindly apply. Um, you can chat me behind the scene and we will try as much as possible to support you. She also touched on the Ghana space policy, which is one important thing coming. Um, Solomon, please can you unmute yourself? All right, good. She also touched on the Ghana space policy, which is so dear to some of us. Um, once this is in place, it will open doors and good avenues for a lot of youth out there. And we are proud that Dr. Nanama Brown Kluche is our advisor for the Ghana Cancer Rocketry Championship. Please, can you give her a round of applause? Just clap or use um, the reactions over there. <laughs> we are excited to have you on board. Yeah, so that was the keynote address that we listened. We will move on straight to um, our next presenter, who is our guest speaker. And uh, our next speaker graduated from the Faculty of Technical Sciences in the University of Novi Sad. He is the head of the Committee for Space Program Development in the Republic of Serbia. He is the person in charge for coordinating of all World Cancer Rocketry Championship Consortium activities worldwide. He is a member of the Aeronautic Unit of Serbia. He is a Radio Amateur Alliance of Serbia and International Aerospace Command. He has authored a lot of articles. He launched an educational program related to space engineering for students of elementary, secondary, and higher education in Serbia. He is the author of the National Strategy for the Development of Education, Human Resources, and Technical Capacities in the Sphere of Space Engineering. Also behind himself, he has two inventions related to structure and mechanism, several lab works related to optics, magnetic induction, biometry, and 3D printing of elements for space application, 11 softwares, sev several published works, and three successful launch satellites. Wow, I can go on and on and on and on and on and on. And it is none other than Dusan. So Dusan, if you can take over now. Uh, thank, thank you very much. Can you can you hear me well? Yes, please, we can hear you clearly. Yeah, thank you. I, I will not share my screen and so on. I have, I just want to, to say something, <laughs> try to say something powerful to you because I'm so excited and uh, I have a great honor and pleasure to be today with, with all of you again with, in, with your new new friends and uh, people. This is really amazing. And thank you very much for for invitation. Of course, uh, you said uh, something uh, 
some introduction. Thank you very much. And uh, I want to uh, say, yeah, I am from CSPD, from Chromit, from Space Program Development from Serbia. That that is actually one of the organization that is a founding founding organization of the WCRC. Uh, I mean, World Cancer Trust. Uh, 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 CSPD is the actually uh, uh, the member of the World Cancer Trust uh, Consortium. That is actually seven countries. And today, because uh, entire WCRC com community is well informed about your today's event and your event in in, uh, in July, uh, next month, uh, I have a great uh, opportunity and very nice obligation uh, on behalf of, of uh, all founding countries, which is actually seven countries, Portugal, Italy, India, Canada, Tunisia, and Peru, and Serbia, uh, to read uh, some message uh, to all of you uh, that I received a uh, few moments before uh, the meeting starting. So please, uh, please uh, listen, listen to this. Uh, dear organizers and participants, dear friends, we want to thank you all uh, to thank you all for the enthusiasm desire energy that you have and that you are entering into the implementation of wcrc activities in your country today you are hope givers i repeat you are hope givers that is very important to the rest of the world because many countries are still in a very difficult situation as far as the pandemic is concerned. And the uncertainty is still present, as you know. But you, dear friends, are the light at the end of the tunnel. With this meeting and your upcoming event in July, you will be the engine ignisher called the World Cancer Trophy Championship. You will help yourself in the first place and your people and your country but also all of us who want humanity to move to move forward with joint forces and on an equal basis you begin the process of learning the space engineering in concrete way through which many talents and ideas will emerge please accept our most sincere admiration and support thank you and good luck this is the message to all of you uh, please uh, accept this as something that is quite normal i always said that we are all equal on this planet and that we are also all very weak but very special and we have a opportunity to help each other space engineering is interdisciplinary and through this uh, you will notice by time that we will uh, learn a lot and be able to help to all of us. So, uh, as uh, since this is a national campaign that you right now, uh, your work right now, uh, I will uh, I will ask uh, from all of you, I mean, on uh, organizers or participants, to make as many. Uh, video materials as possible, please. Uh, that is uh, very important because uh, WCRC wants to publish all your work, uh, work during the uh, uh, cancer development, uh, during preparation, during organization of the events, doesn't matter. Even your some personal video materials regarding this topic. That is very important because we will publish it on WC website, uh, WCRC uh, social networks, we will actually make uh, that available throughout the, the, the world uh, because our intention is to promote you, your country, your work, and uh, to give you opportunity to you promote yourself. And on the other hand, to, uh, to motivate uh, others throughout the world uh, to, to go with, uh, to follow you. Uh, this is very important. So, as I said, you are you are the ignition. 
that is uh, very good and very hard, I know, but you are not alone, as I said many times. So uh, I want to tell you that uh, by this uh, publishing material, that is very important uh, for WCRC improvement. Uh, right now, uh, I'm uh, involved, I must control and try entire process of WCRC worldwide. Uh, and I, I and others, I'm not satisfied to have only straight line of uh, so-called development. Uh, on one hand, we have personal development as, as uh, engineers or persons itself. But uh, if we talk about something bigger, bigger, which is WCRC or some other event, we must uh, from time to time make improvements. We must uh, raise the quality. So uh, by this uh, publishing materials, that is actually some kind of internal competition, internal of all members of all participants. Because, uh, for example, if Ghana plays the high standards of, of the event, then Serbia or other country must follow the standards or be better, and so on and so on and so on. And that is actually internal improvement. So please accept uh, only on that on, on that way also. Uh, you know that probably, you know that we work uh, on a uh, world uh, uh, unity satellite. Ghana is also uh, involved. Actually, all countries of WCRC are involved. You are still uh, able to send the, the proposal of the mission of that satellite uh, <clears throat> payload uh, as Brazil. Brazil already sent uh, uh, Italy and so on. So, you have enough time, uh, India is in charge. Uh, you know that is very hard situation right now in India, but we work online as much as we can. So that is one of the very big projects uh, regarding WCRC. So, okay, I can say rocketry is one thing and we work on, on that, that is development, that is the learning, but let's work on something concrete after that. And that is actually that Saturday. So uh, that is, one big machinery, as I always said, uh, soon you will have your ground station and you, you, will, uh, you will be able to track the existing satellite in orbit. Also, you will be able to track that uh, your satellite World Unity Sat and so on. So this process starts right now and I once again congratulate you and admire you, so keep going. Wow, thank you so much, Dusan. And it's always a pleasure to have you. Um, Dusan will stay for uh, some time with us and I'm sure after we listen to our next guest speakers, if there are some few questions, you will clarify uh, for us all. All right, thank you so much, Dusan. So we will then quickly move on to our next presenter. And of course, this presenter is a good friend of mine. And um, he is called Marco Romero. He is a ballistic and navigation satellite specialist from the Angola Space Program. Uh, who, he started his career at the Angola National Air Force as aeronautical engineer. He has completed the Advanced Master of Space System Engineering at ISAE Supero in France and the European Space Agency Master of Science on Human and Robotic Space Exploration and Development Systems Program. Outside his studies, Marco led the commission of implementation of the Angolan Center for Space Studies, now supporting the activities of the space application and services law, innovations and outreach departments of the Space Angolan Program. Marco is also the national point of contact for the Space Generation Advisory Council for Angola and the national outreach coordinator for the International Astronomical Unit Office for Astronomy and Astronomical Observatory of Japan, Open Cosmo Cosmos Academy Ambassador and ISS Ambassador, World Economic Forum, Global Shaper for the World Concert and Rocketry Competition. I can go on and on and on and on. In parallel with the Operation Space Activate, he supported 
the development of space education and outreach program in Angola that was expanded through Africa through videos and comic books, pick up satellites and learning STEM lectures, where we can highlight the three editions of the space education comic book kits and satellites. Marco worked at Airbus Defense Space Academy as intent, studying the utility of small satellites for capacity building, specifically studying the path from CANSAT to space system engineering in Africa. Complementary to his internship, he has started an observation mission at the French Aerospace Valley to explore Nanostar, UFO, Galatia, European program, and developed a strategy mm. to implement a sustainable new space ecosystem in African countries, regardless of their space development stage. In the last four years, Marco developed and consolidated six startups that have representation and participation in the development of the aerospace sector in Africa. I can go on and on and on, there are lots of things that I know. Uh, so let's just move on. On the scope of his Pan-African contribution and international collaboration, Marco is leading the Hambisat, a capacity building nanosatellite program, which aims to deliver space capability to all African countries. Indeed, it is a pleasure to welcome my friend, which I've worked hand in hand with him, and Marco will take us through how we go about CANSAT and all that you, you want to know about CANSAT. Marco, please take over. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Kingsley. I don't know if you can hear me. And yes, we can hear you. My slides. So, yes, please. Uh, the pleasure is, is all mine. Best thing that happened since I joined the space community was knowing, was to know people like you, Dusan, and uh, and other amazing uh, folks that made this space industry a, a great place for every one of us. And this is another, another, another reason why I really, I'm really taking uh, uh, your steps, how we look at learning and joining you. Okay, thank you very much. It's an honor, it's an honor. And today I came just very briefly start to talk to you uh, more in a way where to, to give some of the tools, to give some of the, 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 the possibilities that you can explore during your cancer development um, 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 way. I won't expand too much about my, 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 my career. You see as a, uh, more connected to the space system side, architecture of the missions and development, but more and also for the commercial part. Today, I'm not bringing directly the commercial part, the space application, but I work a lot with the space application and they are very connected to space. And today we will understand why we will need to, to, to study and learn from concepts uh, even though they are not going to space, they are very powerful tools to help us to explore space. And if you understand what is space, uh, and if you know that uh, according to NOSA, everything that is outside our atmosphere is considered uh, space, we, um, we, uh, we need to, to to define the CANSAT as this piece of space asset that don't go to space, although at the, at the beginning it was proposed as a program that had the target to bring school initiatives, school PICO satellites all together on the first space mission of a PICO asset in space. But indeed, we look into advantage of uh, putting an asset in the, in, into the outer space for to take advantage of a clear view of the sky, navigation possibilities, to predict phenomena and to look to small font dots here on Earth and understand how they work. That's the reality. And when we are mimicking, when we are making a, a, a 
an analog of a satellite simulating a satellite mission with the concept we need uh, to look exactly what will be the spin-off from doing a concept mission and, and, and learn with a very cost-effective ship and uh, engineering representative tool uh, for a big satellite. The story was exactly the same. We start with the big projects, but then allowed more and more universities and startups since uh, 1998. Prof. Bob Twiggs just proposed that, okay, we can do it cheaper, we can do it accessible for all of us. That's why together we are here. I just gave some homework in case you have the slides after to look in Africa and you will, you will understand from what is the, 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 the typical architecture of big satellites and what is the, the typical architecture of uh, a cancer? There are a lot of similarities and they are all on that segment where we take those features, those communications, we take the, the satellite mission itself, process it and provide a solution to improve lives. That's the chain of command. That's the chain of implementation of a satellite uh, mission, either if it is a pico, nano, or big satellite. We are building a set to explore space for the humankind development, curiosity, and improving lives. Uh, daily lives, like topographic maps, communication in remote areas, firefighting system, internet, TV, navigation, all those things, they are things, even those small things like the peacemakers, ultrasonics, um, the, the, the LCDs, all those things, the, the, the fire blankets, they are the result, they are on, on a group of the more than 200 uh, spin-offs of the space exploration since 1958, 57. All this space exploration after that made a spin-off and today we live with that uh, and we apply this to malaria, uh, uh, agriculture, defense, uh, public uh, safety, telecommunication. And this is what I'm doing here daily life here in Angola, applying space data for uh, SDG support and in Africa is exactly the same. We have communication uh, and uh, herd observation as the main priorities, a very high valuable market that by 2020, 2050 or the next 20, 10 years will be evaluated in 10 billion Okay, I think you muted me, but now uh, you're back. Yes, that's the main difference. The main difference in term is not in terms of architecture, but mostly on the size of the application. For example, if a satellite, if with one big satellite on a geostationary orbit, I can cover one third of the globe. With a CubeSat, I can just cover a very, very thin part of the globe. So I need more CubeSat. And with the CamSat, I can just cover inside the atmosphere a very, a very small piece of these big missions, like one tenth of, of that mission. But even though CamSat, they are very good to simulate real satellites with the local, to perform real missions. Uh, to perform, uh, to understand every single part of the mission and subsystem. And in Africa, the scenario is exactly like this. More than 70 countries started their space program or somewhere in, in, during their space uh, program invested on PICO satellite training for, the, 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 for people, doing initiatives on PICO satellites. And only after that, they jumped to, to, to CubeSats and to big satellites and now for uh, continental contribution programs. And you can see here some of them. And here in Angola, I'm doing exactly the same. Bringing from 
bring the big industry and uh, the nano satellite and pico satellite to create more and more applications from those applications and knowledge we will have here in Angola more startups and producing more events like this, like uh, Dusan and Kingsley are doing right now. We do it here in Angola. And this will boost and will foster more and more uh, startups here in Angola. Uh, and so far, I could reach this uh, interesting number of more than 70 uh, young Angolans engaged with the space development and with the space exploration. I won't talk too much about Ghana because I know that Ghana is doing an amazing job in terms of Pico satellites. Just remembering uh, and sharing with you that part of the um, that part of the of of the uh, Ghanaians history where you are doing and 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 being on the front of a very interesting and and. and making uh, every single of us proud. But going more technically, let me tell you that to develop every single mission, you need all those elements. You start by understanding what are the needs that will make you pay, pick a payload and put in space. But a payload itself will not survive in space. So we need to create all the conditions to survive, to micrometeorize, radiations, uh, high temperatures, a vacuum, and all those things. That's why we have all the subsystems to survive, to make the payload survive and perform its mission. Otherwise, on the ground, we need to have a mission control to support a mission. And before it, uh, we need to have the launch, that is the mean uh, of transportation to arrive there. And in terms of construction and licensing, we need every single specialty, every single type of knowledge, uh, from A to Z to develop a space mission. And every single state mission, uh, space mission starts with a statement of mission, like a very brief description uh, telling why we are developing a CANSAT mission. And after that, we need to know how, to, where to put our satellites. In the, in the, in the case of the CANSAT, we have the possibility to launch it in sugar rocket, high power rocket, drones, aircrafts, balloons, very different ways just to make the CANSAT simulate a free fall uh, uh, that is analog to a, 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 an orbital free falling position. Here in Angola, without many risks, we are doing exactly the same that you can do that. Sugar powder made rockets to launch our concepts, modeling with what we have. And launching is nothing more than using a balloon to gain altitude and from this altitude drop the cancer. The same thing will happen for uh, new concepts as glider concepts, as um, flat uh, connected uh, um, cancers and different ways to have a moment of launch, free fall, receiving of telemetry, and sending commands to perform a mission that sometimes is very fun, like saving uh, and protecting a bag to an uh, egg to avoid it to, to crash on the ground. And for the mission, as I said, I'll not take too much time, but you will uh, split a team in mission manager, flight director, payload manager, and safety officer. All the rest will be connected to every single domain of a satellite architecture and mission architecture. Someone responsible for the documentation, thermal, electric, someone to call the navigation and guidance system and the communication uh, of the satellite. The flow exactly this. I'll share the slides with you. Do not take too much of your time. And all those uh, algorithms and all those schemes will help you through your development of the business. The same way NASA and, uh, and some other agencies used to develop their uh, million dollar space programs, coming from the mission, defining the requirements 
from the requirements, the architecture, and from the architecture going very deep on the, the type of boat that will survive to uh, 200, 300 uh, Kelvin um, temperatures in space. So in a nutshell, at the end, after defining all those parameters, you need to make the trade-off. Here, an example of a CAMSAT trade-off where you will uh, balance between the way the, the, the size, the complexity, the cost, all your CAMSAT. And there are so many tools that I want to expand myself on that uh, because I really want to go deeper on that. I want you to have a look on these slides. And uh, from there, we will uh, uh, we will we will go deeper on different resources, different ways to to probe to call an Arduino or Raspberry uh, or an antenna to 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 or to to have to acquire concept kits that are more pedagogic or didactic that are several of them. And on purpose, I'm just bringing you like a piece of what you can find and what you can explore. If you are curious and uh, you have here brilliant minds like Dusan Kingsley and other, other members where you, can, where you can reach out to understand in detail, uh, to get mentorship, to get content so you can develop what we are doing for Africa uh, on the Ubisoft project is a three stages uh, uh, capacity building program, as King you said, where we will start by giving uh, to all the 55 countries in Africa the CANSAT capabilities so, can, so they can jump to a 1U and to 3U CubeSat to support the, the future African Space Agency. Uh, he, this going from rockets to all the space law. Those deliverables, there are many capacity buildings that start from CANSAT possibilities and go up to launching satellites on orbit. You have the same uh, very good tools, not for CANSAT. And now I'll just finish by telling you what we have been doing on the on Pico satellite here in Angola, that we are working with 35 universities. From those universities, we launched the best 10 uh, campsites in Angola, we dropped them on Alouette helicopter from the Air Force. And from those, we are now preparing them for the next steps that are the CubeSats that we are also developing. And you can have uh, concept that can have the rover bag to explore human and robotic uh, planetary exploration, the gliders for uh, um, solar sailings and the earth observation, communication and navigation applications. That's it, that's what I can uh, share with you. I'm so sorry to be very brief, but it was on purpose because what I really want is that from here, we can have a more technical exploration of those topics. That's the point here uh, from my side. I, I, I really, um, I really thank you, uh, Kingsley, and I'm here to support you. That's for sure. You'll be great engineers. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Marco. Um, we are indeed pleased and so happy to have you on board. And of course, Marco will be supporting us with technical um, challenges and any technical advice. So he's always on board and he's willing to support the team. So please um, feel free to contact him anytime that you want. Um, let me quickly just ask if we have Dr. Julian Bennett from the Academic City College. All right, I'm sure he... Uh, okay, all right. So then we will then move on to... Um, maybe before we move on to our next presenter, um, I think we can couple 
with the three presenters that we've had. If you had any questions, please, we just want to take um, four questions before we move on to, I mean, the details. Yeah, if you have any question, um, you can just use the reaction, just use the reactions and I will call on you so we, you can ask your question. The question can be directed to Duzan, um, Dr. Nanama Kluche is still online and um, Marco is still online. So if you have question, please just use the reactions to draw my attention and I'll call on you. Any question? Yeah, I think, um, so if you're also shy for any reason, you can also you put can it type. in the chat. And exactly, then, um, yeah. I think Bilal will read it out uh, when we have anything like that. Thank you. All right. Um, whilst you are waiting for our questions, which is not coming, um, <laughs> all right, so we will then move on to our next presenter. Then I'm sure from then we will then um, ask all the questions together, then we will try as much as possible to attend to all the questions. So our next presenter is a passionate young astronomer with experience in teaching physics, science, astronomy, electronics, and programming. He believes strongly that space science is the key to finding answers to the mystery, to the mysteries of both the Earth and the universe. And this in turn will help develop an advanced life on our home planet. Of course, I agree with him. At the moment, our next speaker, who is Solomon Apache, is an astronomer and science communicator at the Ghana Planetarium Science Center and also works with the Ghana-based space startup X Space Solution. He has been involved in many astronomy and science outreach programs, talks, and projects. They include International Astronomical Union Astronomy School projects, stimulate, yeah, stimulating interest, inspiring and educating teachers and students in astronomy, and name Exo World Ghana projects. That was in 2019. That was a global project to name an exoplanet, and that is a planet found outside our solar system and its host star, among others. Solomon is the organizer for the Ghana Cancer Rocketry Championship and also will be pushing for the World Cancer Rocketry Championship. Solomon will be taking us through the happenings of the Ghana Cancer and Rocketry Championship. So Solomon, please can you take over? Okay, so Kingsley, thank you so much um, for your nice words. Um, I hope everybody can hear me. Yes, please, we can hear you clearly. Okay, so before I do that, let me just make you the host in case um, um, anything comes up. Okay. All right, so thank you so much. Um, I'll just put up my slide. Um, and then, yeah, thanks everybody for joining. All right, yeah, so thank everybody for joining. And uh, before I'll go on to say anything, um, I should say that, um, so Kingsley, um, so yes, indeed, um, I'm one of the organizers for the Ghana Cancer Rocketry Championship. Um, Kingsley himself serves as um, a promoter. Um, I think we have Barnabas and we have some other um, people I'll be mentioning their name shortly who are also with the Ghana Cancer Rocketry Championship. So it's a teamwork really, so thank you so much. Um, yeah, so at the moment, um, these are our partners. Um, so the Ghana Cancer Rocketry Championship um, have been partnered by the Space Generation Advisory Council, uh, which Kingsley is part, um, and also the World Cancer Rocketry Championship, of course. Um, and also um, the, the Young Space Startup in Ghana, X Space Edition is also, um, I mean, making sure this um, happens. So I'm just going to um, talk about three things, basically. Um, I'll talk a little bit about um, X space solution and what they are doing in Ghana. And then I'll move on to the details of the Ghana Cancer Rocketry Championship. And maybe just mention a few timelines and the things we are expecting um, to do and then achieve um, within the next month until um, we have um, our national campaign, I think early uh, next year. Um, so um, X space solution um, usually does um, anything that relates with space. So um, we do space science consulting, um, if say you want a telescope, you want to, you need help in deciding what to buy and all those things, we also help do that also. 
Um, we also run our, the key thing that we do um, is we run astronomy, electronics and robotics section and also coding, uh, which I'll show you a few images. Um, so we're actually um, looking forward to taking part um, more in space science in terms of satellite design amongst those other stuff. And I'm sure um, our speakers have already mentioned um, one of the things to get started is to, um, I mean, either lead or do some of the things that um, we are doing, which is um, being able to um, have the Ghana Cancer Rocketry Championship. Um, so um, these are a few images. So if you have a kid who loves astronomy, needs a telescope or anything, we can help with that. Um, and also um, these are a few images on our astronomy sections. So we have um, a lot of schools who, not really a lot of schools, but a lot of parents who homeschool their kids and they want to teach them space science and astronomy. And we have all, with all those things too. So these are just a few images you can see. Um, so this is also on the robotics and coding. Um, and this is very important for the Ghana Cancer Rocketry Championship because I'll mention shortly how this really relates to um, 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 building, uh, say, a, a miniature satellite as we would be doing. So these are a few images on our electronics and um, robotics sections, uh, which I'm sure we would get to. Um, yeah, also, we also help with organizing space um, space science events. Say you want to organize a party, but you want to add a little astronomy to it, we can come there with our telescopes and help you see, say, Saturn and all those um, planets if they are visible. Um, our models is usually based, or most of our teaching models are based on uh, the idea of Elon Musk, um, um, which we call the, I mean, his, 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 it's called the Ad Astra, uh, which is just teaching kids how to really learn to choose. I mean, teaching them with tools, very experimental, and that's what we really do. Um, so I think Kinsley has mentioned briefly, so we have also been involved in the Name Exo World Ghana project, uh, which was to just name a planet which is outside our solar system and also um, the uh, Misam star. Again, this was also partnered with the Ghana Planetarium Science Center also. So um, we have big ambitions, um, like um, I've mentioned, we want to help build satellite um, we want to um, help um, if we have to launch these various satellites, say um, in the future plan and um, develop um, a space program for Ghana and then also for ourselves. Um, so I'll just move on quickly to GCRC. Um, so um, we have kind of, um, we, we have uh, say ladders in terms of our leaderships. So we do have um, um, Duzan who is serving as a, a general advisor and a coordinator for the Ghana Cancer Rapid Championship. Um, we also have Dr. Nanama, who is serving as an advisor, um, and also Dr. Bennett, Julian Bennett also is serving as um, an advisor there. I'm sorry, his name is not there. So um, the GCRC organizers and promoters, we are a lot of team, um, and I want to make sure I mention everybody's name um, so that we know that um, we are really working hard. So um, we have Barnabas Nomo, Academic City, Ferdinand Sam, um, Aerospace Engineer, and also um, a teacher at uh, one of the uh, senior high schools in Ghana. Um, we have myself, um, we have Kinsley, um, we have Bilal Harim Eyal, um, who um, just completed his MSc in um, Leeds. Um, we also have um, Bagan Jonathan, who is a pilot who also works closely to just um, offering advice to us. We have Mr. Jake Yelson also, um, who is a, a graduate from the Aerospace Engineering Department. Um, we also have, Sorry, I have to move this. Okay, great. We also have um, Kaba Gideon, um, who is also um, with the media. Um, and also I think Amoako Philip also is with um, our media team. So yeah, so these are just two of the team members. All right, so um, I think we have already heard about um, how Ghana kind of started um, its space, um, I would say journey in some sense. Um, so about a few years ago, we had um, Ghana, um, launched the very first satellite, which is called Ghana Sat-1, which Julian Bennett himself was part of the project. Um, so this is just um, to remind ourselves of where we are. So now let's quickly go on to the GCRC plan itself. So we have actually started this a long time ago. Um, so I think way, way back early um, this year, um, we actually started um, putting a team together to make sure that we can um, have this competition held. So we opened call in March, um, and then from there, we moved on to picking um, the people we call points of contact um, for the team so that we make sure that we can coordinate all these various um, activities. So I would say that um, at the moment, the competition is for um, the tertiary levels, 
and we would have elementary um, um, sections coming up, I think much later. I think Design assured us that um, the World Cancer Rotary Championship is going to open calls for um, such campaigns for younger audience um, next year going. Um, so then we moved on to being able to make contact with people to make sure that um, people are, to find if people are interested in taking part in this, which we did in March um, to around uh, May. And then from there, we have been making contact with partners, among others. So we have planned that um, apart from the general principle in people learning how to say develop their miniature satellite, doing the design and everything, uh, we are going to actually um, have a whole lunch where we teach people um, or we, I mean, introduce the whole campaign in Ghana. We also um, help people or students to understand how um, these things are building these satellites are important and also why Ghana we should um, take such steps. So those are the few things we have been doing. Um, so at the moment we are here meeting with participants. So after we opened the call, we had about, I mean, over 70 applications from um, about more than nine universities in Ghana. And from there, um, we have made contact um, um, in terms of making people um, form teams among others to get ready for the, um, the launch campaign, which we are going to do um, sometime in July. So um, here we are in the meeting and um, I'm, I'm very, very happy that we have uh, most of our guests here who have been able to mention uh, most of the important things that needs to be done. So uh, from there, from the launch campaign, it will actually be um, a hybrid event, which means we have an in-person and then we also have um, um, uh, online. So you can either join online or also join us uh, live from whatever venue we would confirm um, um, soon. And then from there, we will have two mini contests. So the mini contests will be like workshops. I'm sure most of you have plenty of questions regarding, um, say, Marco stock or Duzan stock um, in general, because they mentioned critical stuff about the satellite. So you are perhaps scared and you're asking yourself, oh, how can I really build something like that? Can this really be done among others? Um, so yes, indeed, this, this can be done. And um, to actually motivate yourself or get yourself prepared in doing all those things. Uh, that's why we will have a mini contest, which will be a workshop, we, which we are going to teach you guys how, um, or the registered participant, how they can actually go on to design and then eventually build um, um, the uh, uh, sat, sorry, or satellite. Um, so we have two of these various campaign um, um, that in this year before this year ends. And then we will have our national campaign um, sometime early next year. So um, these are some of the teams. I think I've already mentioned a few. Um, so we have a workshop, we have a conference um, on different, different teams. So these are um, what we call the points of contact. So actually we have um, nine uh, points of contact in all the universities. I mean, in most of the universities in Ghana. So we have one person at Maritime, KNST Academic City, Legon, Kofiria Technical University, and then Accra Technical University. Um, this is also to just talk about the applications we have received. Um, so I mentioned we had this from more than nine universities in Ghana, so you can see uh, their names here. Um, so eventually, um, we have decided um, that we are not going to use rockets um, in this year's campaign uh, because using balloons are much easier to do. Um, and um, given what we want to achieve, we believe we can achieve this year's campaign using balloons. However, um, as, as we go on, we can move on to rockets among some other complica uh, complicated, um, I mean, lunch um, videos. So, um, so that's just to say that. Um, then um, in relation to also um, getting ready for the lunch campaign and also our main um, campaign next year, we'll be having a ground station, which Duzan mentioned briefly. So the ground station would communicate with one of the NASA satellites, which X space relation is help, helping set up. Um, I think um, Barnabas also with his team have one of these ground stations in their school, uh, which going forward we may be able to um, use to advance some of the things we are going to do here. So um, um, that's really all for me. But before I end, I'll just go back to uh, one of my slides on um, the electronics and robotics sections at X space solution. Now, if you can see my slide now, you see some kits really. Um, so most of our models are from, I mean, for kids from seven years to about 10 years, um, or I mean, older too. And what they do build is basically what 
we will be teaching you guys to do with a satellite. A satellite needs to have, um, say, an LCD screen. It needs to have a, a temperature and humidity sensor. It needs to have LEDs, which can be used for indicators, among others. These are things that XP Solution is teaching kids to do. So if you can see on my slide, these are things that we teach kids to do. So um, I'm just saying this to motivate you that if you're a participant, you have registered, you have your team, this is not difficult to do. Um, I understand why people would believe it's difficult to do because of um, um, either the exposure or um, just um, our inability to be um, able to be engaged in things like this. But these are things we are teaching kids to do. Um, so these are not difficult, not to build satellite, but satellite needs all these things. And um, we are hoping um, through, through our workshop and through, for example, this meeting, you guys know more about um, these concepts and then know that it's something that is very easy to do and it's not difficult. So um, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for all the speakers and everybody who has joined so far. Uh, it's really overwhelming that knowing that you guys have been with us and then being able to join today's um, section. Um, so thank you so much. Um, I'll end here. Yeah, all right. Thank you so much, Solomon. Um, Solomon has touched on quite detail, um, especially our timelines, which is very important to us. There are some few questions dropping in. We'll be looking at it shortly. Um, it's, it, uh, it will be good to also acknowledge some of... Um, um, I don't know if Bila is online, if you can uh, just turn on your camera, let's just um, see your face. Hello everyone. Yeah, that's um, Bila and also so we can see you and you Bana see. Bas. Okay, all right, sorry. Yeah, and if we have um, Jake, if Jake is online, can you also give us a wave? All right, then um, if Philip is also online, um, I don't know if I've left anyone. <laughs> all right, so uh, that is the team. They are, they are doing amazing work, well, all the good works behind the scene. And as you know, my name is Kingsley. Um, I'm also working as a promoter. The full name is Kinsley Ahim Kradiodu. Um, yeah, so we will just move on straight to the questions, which is very important to us. Please keep the questions coming because we need all these questions to understand. Uh, so we will be in the best position to support. All right, so the first question is, um, I think it's from Asad Jacob and it reads, what are some of the challenges that we should be expecting when designing uh, our concert? And I think this is um, an obvious question. So maybe um, Solomon, you can take them if we still have uh, Marco yes. online. Marco can also yes. drop in or Duzan or any other person can actually come in and support. Yeah, so Kingsley, sorry, I don't think this is my question. I mean, whoa, well, I can answer, but Duzan, can All you right, yeah. take the question? I mean, if Duzan, if, yeah, yeah, if Duzan can, can, can assist, then we'll move on. To... Uh, about, uh, about the main challenge or challenges, that is... Uh, <laughs> Most common question is most one of the hardest questions actually uh, for the cancer, but uh, it's I think that the uh, answer is pretty much easier. The first and uh, most important challenge that you will face in is uh, to start to think much more wider and deeper than usually, because uh, as uh, Marco and Solomon explains, uh, we uh, work up, uh, about uh, space, engineer space engineering in atmosphere, lower atmosphere on Earth, but we think uh, about space. There is a say, uh, work locally, think globally. We work locally, but think uh, cosmically. That is very, very, uh, uh, very big challenge for all of us. Most of us uh, did not uh, understand right now what uh, what I'm trying to explain. When you uh, make first can set very simple microcontroller Arduino or something like that, they put only one sensor, only one for humidity or temperature or something like that, put in the can or something like that, uh, connect with balloon or something, and descend with, with the parachute, you will start to realize, oh my God, yes. I received some temperature changes. I received some, some telemetry, humidity changes. Why is that? 
And that is the challenge. You don't know what is the real challenge. I just just use your imagination. We don't uh, we know so uh, small things about cosmos, about space. We now work with a tool, as Marco said, you can set as a tool for easier understanding uh, what we can do uh, on planet for cosmos or something like that. So please accept my apology for this kind of uh, answer. But this is one of the answers of, of this very complex question. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know if anyone can add, but I'm sure, I'm sure um, Tuzan has actually done justice to this question. Yeah, I, I think I would want to just add a few things. Yeah. Okay, so I, I would say, so I mean, just like I would just build up from what I said in my, at the end. So you see, when you are building anything really, um, I mean, most of the things um, that you need to know is first of all, know what you're, you're building. Um, I mean, what do you need? I mean, whatever you're building, what do you need it for? So usually if you know these various, these two things, um, and then you know a little bit about how to get it together, um, I think most of the challenges uh, which this design has mentioned would be overcome because you know what you are doing. Um, if it's say soldering these components that you don't know how to do, um, you know I need to get this done and all that, and you can move on from there because you know what you want to achieve. So um, that's just something small on, on that part too. All right, yeah, and um, one good thing is that you will see some kids who are building their own satellites. So, I mean, this is very inspirational when I see kids building their own satellites. So it gives, um, I mean, that should tell you that you can also do it more than, I mean, yeah. So please just feel free and be self-motivated. Uh, we, will, we, we, uh, we will be having um, a discussion with our points of contact. I um, mean, these guys have been playing a very key role but before that, we will just still answer some of these questions. There is one question here from Seth, and it reads, are the mini contest months long? I think Solomon, timelines once again. Hey, say, say what you said again. Yeah, so he's asking if the mini contest will take a month long. Okay, um, so, so no, it's not going to take a month. Uh, what we have decided is after the launch campaign, say in July, um, the next thing we'll do is we'll wait um, a month or two months and then we we'll organize the mini contest. Um, so just like I said, it will be a workshop. So it, it really depends. Um, it, it could be a three, uh, I mean, a three day conference. It could be a two day conference or a one day conference. So it's not a whole month. It's either a few days uh, which we will decide and then we will share the information for you guys. Yeah, to you guys. Again. Yeah, all right. So, um, I'm sure um, that actually answers the question. Um, another good question, which is, which is here, and it reads, what is the functionality of the satellite you will be launched? What things would, <laughs> would we be able to use uh, with these satellites? And how far will these satellites be from the Earth atmosphere? I think these are um, the ultimate questions and it's open to, um, I mean, so, I don't so know if Marco is still online or Duzan or Solomon, yes. any of you can take it. Yeah, Duzan, you go ahead. Yeah, yeah please. Uh, this is an excellent question because uh, it's uh, regarding to, we, we actually define uh, the rules of uh, each competition, yes. every competition, which means that your national campaign, your national competition in Ghana, uh, you as an organizer will define the rules and in that rules, they, you will define the mission. So a mission is something that you must define first if you want to send satellite to space or if you want to make a cancer and launch in, on, on, the, on, on Earth. So for example, uh, this year, uh, uh, mission uh, globally will be uh, uh, air pollution, which means that you put in your cancer any kind of sensors as a payload, which uh, can monitor the pollution uh, during the sending to, uh, from, from the balloon or rocket or something like that. So it's on you to decide what kind of sensors you will use to monitor the changes in atmosphere 
during the sending. Of course, the second uh, the second part of the question was what what is the height, the altitude? The altitude depends of uh, uh, also of uh, your decision. If you use a balloon, you can launch balloon because that is a helium balloon. Uh, if you use balloon for some uh, uh, one hundred or less of so one hundred meters, that is. Uh, very, very long distance from the ground because of the wind and other aspects, but you can learn a lot of things in that altitude of 500 meters. Believe me, you can uh, uh, learn a lot, uh, much less, uh, maybe 40 or 50 uh, meters. Uh, but if you use, for example, rockets, you can reach uh, much more heights and uh, then, then uh, wind is not so big problem except for the sending, of course, uh, because of the parachutes. And uh, as I said, you must decide in Ghana what uh, is the best altitude and best way for launching. For example, please, in Serbia, 2009, uh, during the uh, uh, international cancer competition, one day we didn't have a wind. And second day, uh, we have so strong wind that uh, because we use the rockets, uh, first day we launched uh, four, uh, 300, 400 meters, and second day only uh, 50, uh, five zero meters, 50, zero, uh, 50 meters, because uh, of so, so strong wind. And uh, we have our crop fields uh, on, uh, on our airport, you know, sites. So cancer descent to crop fields, we cannot reach them. So that is actually the, uh, the, the answers on your question. So Ghana will decide about everything. Ghana will define rules. You consult among you, between you, uh, what is the best for you. Only you know what is the situation in, in your country and uh, WCRC, will not uh, 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 jeopardize or something like it will, will not uh, be uh, will not make you problem with that decision we just will obey your decision you are the bosses in your country you know and that is, that is only important you know that is the answer actually <laughs> yeah so yeah, exactly yeah. so um i must, I must say yeah, some of this question is so open up the gcrc team members if anyone also want to um, come in, please kindly do so. All right. Okay. Um, so, so let me say something quickly. Um, so just right. like Dusan said, um, so we have decided, um, I mean, those various altitudes where you guys, yeah, I mean, using the balloon, where those various concerts would, would reach, which will show that your um, payload or your project has been successful. So all those information will be shared with you shortly. So we have all those things lined up. Um, we are hoping that when we meet you first, I mean, people get to know what they have to do um, during those workshops and conferences. Then you have all those details and then you know I mean, where to go to. Um, however, if you think you need it now, it will be announced shortly. So um, don't worry, we will share all those information with you. Again, good question. Yeah, and of course, and I think uh, that is very good. So those of you who are still scared about the technical know-how, um, just a quick uh, update that we uh, you will be going through different workshops and different seminars before we actually start the actual. Um, so please just feel free. And um, if there have been lots of questions, asking about the technicalities and others. So please uh, feel free and um, contact us. Uh, let me see, there's another one, last question that I want us to just address, then we can then move on and listen to our points of contact. And um, I think I'll just couple these two questions together. Uh, the last one was asking about um, would we be able to track and how would we uh, go about it? Um, yeah, uh, about the tracking. And the next question is also asking if we are going to provide them with the kits that they, or they will get them themselves. So okay. let's just answer the two questions in one. Okay, so I'll just start from the kit. Um, so sadly, no, there's no kit um, that we will be giving you, which has all the components you need to put together to build um, your concept. That would be what I call spoon feeding. It's like telling you what to do and how to do it, and which means we don't have any innovation or anything. So what I would say is um, during the various workshops and even during this, some of these talks, 
um, we have mentioned that um, for a satellite to be functional or to you for you to have a satellite, it needs stuff like um, microcontrollers, it needs sensors, among others. So what XP solution will be doing is we will be providing you with microcontrollers. If you think you need a microcontroller, we will be providing you with some of those things, and then some also some also some sensors. Also, so yes, uh, we will not be providing with a whole kit which tells you what to do and where to put what. No, we'll be providing you with some of the key components we know would be critical in you building the the, the concert. Um, and then the first question was, sorry. Um, I think it, you're asking about um, tracking. Will we be able to track? Track, yes, yes. And how yes. will we go about it? Yes. So again, um, if you want to track um, something you send up or you send anywhere, it just needs a sensor, a GPS um, 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 a model, module really, and it will be able to track and then tell wherever that is. Um, again, these are stuff that have already been done here. Panabas and his team have done numerous of these things. So these, these are not, um, I mean, things that are out of question. Maybe we will be giving you, I mean, we'll be providing some of these things, but it's like, if you provide everything you need, there's no innovation, okay? It's like you guys will put it together and just pre represent. But what we want you to do is, so you think out of the box, just like Duzan mentioned, if you need critical, the critical component, like I, just like I've said, will be given to you. And then I think I'm, I'm not taking away this, but there's a news coming up that um, you, there's a competition we want to run alongside this, which is you just record yourself. Those who have already registered, record yourself um, and tell us how excited you are about the GCRC campaign. And if your video is selected, reach a lot of people and all that, um, you'll be given some components um, which will be useful in you being able to build your concept. So that's that. So we are not giving you a kit, but we are going to give you some of the components and then you would figure out the rest really. But if you need any help, say you want to buy, you want to buy a component, um, Let's say you don't you don't find it in Ghana, you want to buy a component, you can ask us and we can arrange and then get those components um, to you. Okay, yeah, so. uh, thank you so much, um, Solomon. I think Solomon has actually um, said almost everything. And the fact that we'll be providing you with um, those critical components, um, we'll be mentioning, we'll be going through it shortly about the competition, which is- um, Yeah, yeah, yeah so Kingsley, sorry. Kingsley, so before you go on, um, Barnabas um, want to say a little um, something about the tracking oh, question. Right. So Barnabas, right, you can Barnabas, omit yourself on. and then quickly. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Barnabas from Academic City. And uh, yeah, Julian, is, I see he just joined, but he's like a department coordinator. And um, with regards to the tracking, so what he, over here, what we do a lot of the time is we deploy um, these things called radio sounds. Uh, we are trying to build this atmospheric temperature and uh, short-term weather prediction for Ghana and just in Accra for now. And so we fill these balloons with hydrogen and when we deploy them, they keep pushing the data um, over here. So uh, I was running a, a company on the side called Accra One. And what we I was talking to Solomon about today is that, I mean, if you are, probably going to have problems building your antennas. Um, the way to talk to the network that we created is really simple. You just need um, an, an, eight, an 868 megahertz radio device. Um, well, we'll show you how to connect to it so that you don't really have to worry about building the antenna yourself. Um, you just go ahead and um, plug in and push your data. And then when the data gets pushed, you know where to go for the data from. And then, so the last um, antenna that we got, that we tested, we were able to get um, the balloon up to like seven kilometers and then it popped. So we do not really know if we can still read above seven kilometers uh, altitude or um, that was the max. But then that's like a fair range for you to wrap your mind around. Um, unfortunately for now, we have them only in Accra. Um, over the summer, we'll place about five of them around Accra and each one has like a 12 kilometer radius. So maybe that's something to wrap your head around when you design just so you know what constraints to use. Um, thank you. Yeah. 
All right. Thank you so much, Banabas. And of course, we're going through the detail and the technical know-how during I mean, most of our seminars and our lectures going forward. And um, Banabas also touched on some of the use. I mean, so I think there was a question which was asking about what we'll be using it for. So he touched on uh, most of these stuff. Um, before we listen to our points of contact, maybe we'll take um, some words of encouragement from Dr. Julian um, ben Bennett, a senior lecturer from the city, uh, academic city college. Um, we've been in touch with Academic City College and um, I mean they are doing so much well in terms of space science and are currently um, doing a course in robotic engineering. So maybe if we can hear a little word from um, Dr. Julian. All right, thank you Kingsley. Um, once again, sorry I have to apologize first of all for being so late for the meeting. I was hoping to get home before we could start a meeting, but I'm stuck in traffic. I've actually parked my car so that I'll be able to get a little bit of it before we go off. Um, so I'm very excited about this program, and I'm hoping that lots more of you will be as excited as I am, if not more excited, because we want to see a lot of concerts being built. We want to see a lot of devices that we can communicate, that we can track and communicate with. And one thing I've started telling my students is we, should, we can start looking into um, slight modifications, you know, try to be innovative with a system that we use to send some of these uh, devices into the sky. So it's, it doesn't have, always have to be a balloon. It might be a rocket, um, an earth-based rocket or a space-based one, whichever one we choose to go for. But try to be innovative with ideas for getting these things to work. And then even with the devices themselves, um, it's, it's okay, we can start with the existing concert using the formats that we are used to, but um, again, try to be innovative. Don't let anything hinder you. If the components are available, that's fine, all well and good. But if they are not available, there are many ways we can work around it to get something up in the sky that we can track and communicate with. Um, on our part, we are looking at um, the temperature sensor and then maybe the height sensor or pressure sensor. But you can look at other options, maybe attach a camera, whatever you want to attach to it. But we want to see more of these um, things being built. We want to see more of this activity going on here in Ghana. We're hoping that with, with, within LAC, like, we'll be able to develop to the point where we are even designing and launching CubeSats and then yeah. eventually maybe satellites, you know, full scale, full fledged satellites. So um, I wish you all the best and keep pressing on. I know we can do this. It's, it's not going to be easy. There are lots of challenges along the way. It's taken us a long time to get to this point. I mean, there was a time in my life where I could hardly find people I could discuss engineering principles or engineering things with. You know, so it's exciting enough that all of you are so excited about this and you want to get around to building it. So please don't let anything hinder you. Just keep pressing on till we get this done. We will get this done eventually. Okay, so all the best. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Julian Bennett. Uh, I must say that um, Dr. Julian has been one of, I mean, the biggest men in the space science sector. Um, if you all heard about the all nations that launched their satellites, he played a very key role because he was with them before um, he moved to the academic city. Um, so having him on board is such a great privilege and I'm sure uh, he's always for the youth and he'll be willing to support in any way. All right, so um, like I said, we had our point of contact that we've been um, communicating with them. They've been doing most of the work at the background from the different universities. And we will listen um, just some few words that they, um, they, they, they um, I mean, they'll be playing the role by grouping um, the registered participants. I'm sure most of them registered as group and others registered as individuals. And um, the role of the national point of, uh, I mean, the point of contact is to assist in doing that. And they've been playing different roles. So we will call on them um, for them to just tell us what they've been doing so far. So I'll start with the, the KNUST lead um, and the team. We have Jonathan Echo Apre, uh, Maswell Tete. Um, I don't know if there's anyone from KNUST again, but these are the two names that I have. No, there is, please. <laughs> so there's a <laughs> better, right. better two. Um, oh, yeah. okay. All right. And uh, yeah, and, and the rest. So if, um, I don't know who will be leading. Yeah, I think they, they have figured it out. So they will just tell. All right. Okay. Uh, jo Jonathan will be leading. Okay. All right. Jonathan, we are all, yes. 
So you have three minutes, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so he's, he's waiting to share his screen. So he'll be live in a moment. All right. Um, whilst um, Solomon is preparing, uh, we, will, we will go to um, Academic City. So please also prepare. After Solomon, you will be next. You, you, you so mean after, Jonathan. After, after Jonathan, you will be next. <laughs> All right, Jonathan, you can go on. Okay. Um, I'm Jonathan Ekoapwe. I'm a teaching assistant from the Department of Physics, KNUST, and I'm one of the POCs for KNUST. And you have, I have Max Tete who's also a teaching assistant from the Department of Physics, KNUST, and Alberta Datibo, who's from the Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering in third year. So far, we have a total of 41 participants who, who have registered for the program. And out of them, we have 12 to be females and 29 males which makes them um, 30 and 70 percent for them. 30 for the females and 70 for the males. Uh, we've, we've created a Google form for the participants, for them to fill out so that we, we, are, um, we are going to know those who have not uh, registered as a group, that's individual ones, so that we group them. And we are grouping them based on their strength their skills and weaknesses. So these are the forms they are failing, those without groups. Also, one of the things that we are going to do, so right now they are having their mission, so we are waiting after their mission. We are going to have an in-person meeting with them to encourage them so that they will come to know each other, especially those who who don't have groups, but we will be, and we are going to group them. Yeah. And we are going to try as much as possible when we meet them to have a seminar, probably using Kerbal Space Build Up Sessions for them to have a feel of how to build sets like. And the Kerbal Space Build Up Session is a simulation game for building space rockets and the like. And one challenge that we are having right now is that not all of the participants have registered. So if you are a participant and you are joining us right now and you are from KNUST, we urge you to fill up the Google form if you don't have a group. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Jonathan and your team. Uh, indeed, we are extremely happy to see the good works that you've been doing. And um, I mean, you guys, We've already started being innovative already. So uh, it's good that we are hearing this. And um, so we will move on straight to, I think we, our time, so just fresh through very quickly. Move on to the academic city. And um, is that Techi? Yeah, so Techi. that's Andrela. Andrela, Andrela. Yeah. Um, hello. Um, yeah. I want if, to can, start... can, can, can Jonathan stop sharing your screen so that... Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. All right, Andrea, you can, you can go on, please. Okay, uh, give me a minute. Thank you. All right, so whilst we are waiting for um, Tachi, we'll, um, after Tachi, we'll move on to uh, Accra Technical University. Yeah, we can see your screen, please. Okay. And so, I will be presenting on behalf of the uh, Academic City, uh, GCRC, and um, for Academic City, we had four people register, so they registered for their groups. So we had 12 participants, and out of the 12, two are girls. 
so we have the groups, the groups have already been made. And we have group one with Farouk Teteladi, who is uh, a second year mechanical engineering student, Janice Kwame, a second year computer engineering student, Papayao, computer science. And then with our group two, we have um, Francis O'Hara, Faith Cyril, and Kwabna Boateng. Group three, we have Louisa, we have Chrissy Anto and Nathan Texan, and the last group, Kevin Lawrence Techi, Patrick Hansa, and Alassi. And these are all second, first year and second year students. And so uh, we've done, uh, as you, I don't know if you know it, but we have a space focus group. So, um, uh, members, the uh, participants are also under the space focus group. So we've done um, a lot of activities to prepare them for the cancer competition. And then, um, so the first activity we did was the parachute challenge, where the students were dis uh, tasked to design parachutes, and then they were to um, Land the par they, were, they had eggs in the parachute, so it was supposed to be such that it will land safely without the egg breaking. So the students had to brainstorm and then come up with ideas to build their parachute. And then we've been, we also went to the Ghana Planetarium to visit, and we also met Solomon there at the planetarium. We've also been, I think Barnabas also talked about the Kanda weather balloon, where we send balloons to record um, data and then send it to the blockchain. And with the, when we send data to the blockchain too, there is also a place where we can get all the data that is being recorded. And then we also have some lessons, Arduino lessons, and we teach students how to they can communicate with their satellite when they build it and it is launched. And so some of the pictures from the parachute challenge. And uh, we had a hydrogen um, generator in-house. So that is what we used to power our to um, power our balloons that were used to launch. And then this was also pictures from the Ghana Planetarium. And then moving forward, since uh, some of the students have vacated, we would try to do uh, workshops online, the Arduino lessons, and we'll also do an advanced version of the parachute competition. We had some challenges, uh, so we want to do an advanced version of the parachute challenge. And uh, also one of our plans is organizing some of the uh, a mini concert competition with the in-house before we finally participate. And then the last thing I forgot to add was that uh, with the Accra One project, students are also, some of the participants are also involved and in, they are actively collecting data for the blockchain. So yeah, that is all about the Academic City GCRC. Wow, that's excellent. And uh, I like, how you stress on the ladies that we have 12 participants and two are ladies. Indeed, we really want more ladies to partake in this competition. So uh, it's good. Yeah, thank you so much on the good work that you are doing. And it's also quite relieving to know that you've already grouped your team and that is another good thing coming on, coming in. All right, so we will move on to um, San Kwame Combat from the Accra Technical University. Um, he works with Elvis Annie and Joshua Kumi. I think not, Jen, uh, sorry, Elvis Annie. Uh, Combat, are you online, please? Yes, I am. I am. All right. All right. Excellent. Yeah, good, so ev good evening to all of you. Good evening. Yeah. Uh, sorry for my colleague wasn't able to make it. He told me he was having a meeting at his office today, so he cannot make it today. All right. Also, I wasn't able to, to design a PowerPoint presentation, but I will just talk and then... It's okay. Yeah. yeah, it's okay. Don't worry. Okay, as he mentioned, my name is Kombat Sam Kwame, of Accra Technical University. I'm currently doing my national service at the University of Ghana at the Bioinstitute. 
biomedical engineering department. So currently we have a team and then one individual who registered for the competition. So the team, I think there are three people and then one will register individual. So in the number of four, there are four in total. So last time we were, my colleague and I, so we were able to visit our school to, to see the way forward, what we can do to, to improve our training skills on campus. So we were able to discuss uh, the competition with uh, one of our uh, lecturers. He's now the, the head of department. He said that he's giving us all the support and then anything that we need, all the support that we need from this department, the school, they will be able to give us. If you are in need of a training center, you will be able to give us that opportunity for us to train our people around. So I'm also in touch with the president of the engineering department, the one in charge of the engineering students. So we are working in collaboration and see how best we can send information throughout the school. So those who register, so the, the team that register, one of the teams is in the computer science and the one who register as individual is in the electrical and electronic engineering department. Yeah. So we are always uh, sending the message to the school to prepare to prepare them uh, on the competition, how best we can work together. And then since I, I also graduated uh, at a technical university with a, an electrical and electronic background. So, so all the support that they need as far as electrical and electronics is concerned, we'll be working and then give us all the knowledge that we have so that they can also improve upon the knowledge that they already have. So that's what Elvis and I, we are working hard to make it possible. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much, Combiant, and um, thanks for the great work that you are doing at the Accra Technical University. We are so much impressed with the good works that you've been doing together with your team. And it's good to know that you already formed your team, and at least we have someone who has expressed interest by registering too. All right. Um, quickly, we'll move on to Joshua Kumi, if you are online from KTU, in the Koforidia Technical University, I guess. Do we have Joshua? Okay, whilst we wait for Joshua, then we may move on to the Regional Maritime University, Daniel Asante. Daniel, are you online? Yes, please. Hi. Good evening. All right, please take over. Good evening. Yeah. yeah, so I'm Daniel Asante from the Regional Maritime University. I'm currently offering the electrical electronic engineering and I'm in my first year. So in my school, I think the situation is quite poor because now we only have like, I think two participants, one from the marine, the marine engineering and one from the computer engineering. Um, it turns out that most of the students, they're always saying they are, they are busy, they don't know how to do this, they want to try it next year and, and a lot of stuff. And, and secondly, uh, my class size is really small. We are about only like 10 students and the females are so are very limited. In my class, we only have like one girl and she she's like off. She doesn't really have any interest in this satellite stuff. But I've been able to get in touch with, with, with the TAs and stuff and they're really helping me to gather more team members. So I am sure that in the future, we should get like in three weeks time, we should get like at least more than 20 people joined in and uh so 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 for now there's no team formed and but i'm sure that in the future we should get the team formed and we'll get started uh, so this is my situation now because uh, i'm still trying to get students to, to know that uh, there'll be some conferences coming on that will help them to understand how to build this satellite and that it's and uh, that is still possible so uh, this is my situation here. Thank you. 
Yeah, thank you so much, um, um, uh, Daniel. Yeah, Daniel Asante. Yeah. Of course, I mean, yeah. we do understand some of these challenges. Uh, just like Julian yeah. said that, um, I mean, the early days, he wanted someone just to share these ideas with, but no one is even giving him a listening ear. Yeah. So, of course, we do understand some of these challenges, and um, the good thing is that we overcome all these challenges. Try yeah. as much as possible to invite them to some of the seminars and the training that we will be having, and I'm sure through that okay. they will be of interest as well okay. yeah and of course you, you said you had some two people um, who are on board and having you on board too is um it's a plus so yes. it's good to know yes. all right thank you so much uh, we'll move on thank to the, the next person um who's the university of ghana solomon solomon please are you online solomon dudo Okay, uh, I don't think so. I checked. Um, yeah, maybe he's oh. not in the meeting. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I saw him earlier online. All right. So yeah, it's good to um, hear from. I mean, all our participants. Um, it's also it's also quite relieving hearing from um, Duzan, Marco Romero, and Dr. Nanama Brown Clute, and also having uh, Dr. Julian Bennett to uh, encourage us to know that indeed there are challenges, but we, we are always overcoming as scientists and as researchers. And um, we understand the challenges that you're also going through. So it's good that we've, I think the first meeting that we had with you, we were able to address most of the challenges and we show you how um, we will go about most of these things. All right, so Kinsley, All right. um, I've had information that um, Joshua um, is having some technical challenges. Um, that's why he's not, he's not able to join the meeting. Oh, all right. Yeah, um, it's good to know. Yeah. Um, if there are any other questions, maybe we will give ourselves some few time, maybe just to listen to one or two questions coming in. Thanks, Joshua is back. Um, oh, Joshua is back. Oh, okay. All right. Then Joshua, yeah. please take over. Yeah. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my Good name evening. is Joshua Kumi from Koforidia Technical University, and um, I'm the POC here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Please go on. We want to hear more about, I mean, what you've been doing so far. So if you can right. go on. So, uh, so far, um, we went on strike. Uh, the school went on strike, so most students <laughs> went home. But um, I was sending the, I was making people aware of what they were going to do for them to register um, on WhatsApp. So we've been sharing it in and around. And so classes started on Monday, just this Monday. So this mostly our first uh, week this semester and then um, I'm a teaching assistant there as well so during class times I've been uh, sharing about um, what we're doing what we uh, plan doing even in the future um, to some students but um, honestly uh, there, there, there's a few challenges um, I'm facing especially with, um, you know, satellite and we teach the computer science and then computer networking classes, final years. And um, honestly, if, if, if I want to be honest here, it was shocking to get feedback from people like, uh, even with this computer science, uh, we not, um, how do you call it? Uh, they are not finding their way around then how much more, going into satellites mm -hmm. and all that like we need to be something really big so it's been a bit of challenge for people to get into this and all that but still uh there are few there are few who have um come to me one guy joseph uh who came to me to ask um about like to get more information and um yeah it's i mean that's that's what's going on on the ground i think there should be more awareness um letting people know that you know this is real this is something they can do um even from the technical university so yeah i don't know why they're seeing it to be something huge um i want yeah, them to but... join um some of our meetings they will see kids doing these things and then maybe they will believe it kids in ghana <laughs> yeah. we teach kids in ghana to do most of those things putting those real senses and all those things together it's not difficult mm. um so yeah i mean we'll get there thank you so much yeah, so thank you too. Uh, I would like to also add um, that I think um, the, the issue he mentioned is very real, that we have to improve on the awareness. 
and uh, the fact that there might actually be a misrepresentation in terms of what people think satellites are. So when they think of satellites, they only think of something, you know, in the NASA grade, do you understand? And so because of that, they're like, oh my God, why am I, how am I able to build something like this? So I think we have to actually, yeah, do that, give some sort of awareness for them to know that this is something they can actually do rather than it being something that is beyond them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah. So I think before you open the platform now, if you have any questions, please kindly um, let us know so that we can address most of these challenges that you're going through. Um, just um, let's say five minutes for this questions and answer. Um, okay. If, um, if, 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 if there you are no questions, let's, type, yeah, let's... you can type in your question as well. Feel yeah. free to type in your questions. And yeah, so, uh, yeah, so okay. let, me, let me just say something. Um, so just on the questions, I think somebody asked earlier on, um, like why we are doing this, why is it important and all that. And I think, um, I mean, indirectly, we might have answered the question, but I just want to emphasize that. Um, so this is like testing concept. Um, before you can actually build a satellite into space, you need to go through this phase. So first of all, we start from CANSAT. Um, so it goes to a specific altitude, takes data, which most um, satellites do. And then from there, um, we can move on to getting them into space. So apart from um, all the important things we know satellite can help us do, um, as a student taking part in this competition, um, you're not just building just skills for yourself in terms of what you do, but um, you also make contact with people like us, people. Um, so they're actually people on the team who are not really scientists, but um, are still helping um, to get this done. So um, I just want to say that it has broad applications um, and we will be talking more about this during the conferences, the workshops. This is just initially just making contact with you guys. So thank you. I don't want to talk too much. I think we have spent a lot of time. So um, Kingsley, if there are no questions, maybe we can move on quickly to the announcements and maybe after the announcement, if there are any questions, people want to stay and ask more questions, we'll do so. We don't want to stretch the meeting. Um, yeah, so yeah, I think um, if there are no questions, um, but I, I, we still have Dr. Anama Brown Kluche here, we still have Dr. Julian, Marco, and Dusan Solomon is here. Um, if I um, wanted to just have one or two questions just to address most of these challenges, but I'm sure we've addressed most of your questions. So we will then move on to listen to our remarks. We'll take our remarks and announcements, and um, if Bila. You can take over yeah. now. Okay. Um, well, once again, my name is Bilal. Um, thank you for being here, everyone. Um, I'm going to share my screen now. Okay. Can everyone see? Yes, please. Okay. Um, okay. So the first. Um, Thing we have to, we've, we've come to, I mean, as Solomon mentioned this already, but we have to mention it more in detail. Um, we're going to have um, all the um, participating students um, to make a video um, just stating how, you know, motivated they are for this, um, for this project. Um, so basically you would be telling us exactly how you're going to, um, how, exactly why you are excited to take part in this project. And um, um, when you are able to do this video, it's, it's all going to be a competition. And so um, whoever um, produces the best video would win a prize. Um, in this video, you'd have to state your full name, your institution, the course level, and also your interest and motivation. Um, you can find um, a sample video on the Kansat um, Ghana channel on YouTube, um, where you can see um, exactly what you should do. But also this video is only supposed to give you an idea of what we expect. And so don't feel limited in, in, in any way um, to bring up your own you know, ideas in terms of how you want the video to be. Of course, the video is going to have um, a certain, there's going to be a criteria for selecting what the best video would be. And so you should, um, for example, expect your video to have engaged a lot of like, you know, audiences. And so you can think of that in terms of, say you posted it on Twitter or something like that. And 
you look at the likes and retweets. That's how you would measure whether your video is doing well. Um, of course, the other criteria would be communicated to you after, uh, maybe sometime later after this meeting. Um, there are also a couple of major updates um, you should expect. Um, so the first would be the, um, you should, uh, we'll be communicating the venue for the GCRC launch campaign um, at some point. Also, the you should also expect that there's going to be a website for GCRC where you can be seeing all updates concerning GCRC, including media content. Um, this already, I think, I think um, this last point has been mentioned, and I think uh, most people here are briefed about it already. But there's going to be um, a mini contest later this year before the main campaign, which is to pre prepare Ghana to be able to um, compete, you know, on the on the on the global scale. Um, just moving on to the remarks, um, would like to. Um, so before that, I mean, if you if you feel like you if you have some questions to ask or you want to contact us for any personal or reasons pertaining to this um, to this project, you can contact us at um, on uh, info at spacesolutions.me.uk or the cancer Ghana at gmail.com. Um, thank you so much um, um, for being a part of this. Um, I would like to give um, a special thank you to all our guest speakers for you know inspiring the next generation of um, space enthusiasts and um, all participants should be um, glad or you know excited that they they dared to dream um, to put Ghana on this platform you know um, I would like to leave everyone all the participants with this quote from JF Kennedy um, this is from the Apollo uh, before the Apollo 11 mission um, where it says, um, we choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard, because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills, because that challenge is, that, is one that we are willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win. Um, and I place emphasis on the last part, one we intend to win. So that is the spirit in which we all should be in. And thank you very much once again. Thank you so much, Bilal. Yeah, thank you so much, Bilal. Uh, Solomon, please, can you unmute? I think someone is disturbing us from the background. Sorry, sorry, can't sorry, can't sorry. Like, and only the person. All right, so um, Bilal has said almost everything. Um, one thing that we are also working on is that we are, we've been in touch with uh, NMAS before, which is the Mars Moon Aeronautic Academy and Research Sciences. And uh, they do provide remote online training. Um, they, they, they train the next generation on commercial anal uh, analog astronauts. They are based in the United, um, United States. And um, I've actually attended one of their online training. I've been in touch with Susan, who is the lead. And uh, we are talking to, uh, with them to see how best we can collaborate with them so that the winning team may have the opportunity to get full scholarship. Uh, they've amazing. already given us um, uh, unlimited partial funding already, but we are looking for full funding. Yeah, so we are, we are, we are, we are talking with them to see how best um, they'll be able to support us. Yeah, in our last event, they supported us with 12 full sponsorships. So hopefully if we can get some support from them, that'll be great. So please just um, keep that in mind. Uh, we are also working with the International Space University too, to see how best they can also support us. So uh, we, are, we are trying as much as possible to get all the needed support to support our team. So please get involved and let's see all your innovative ideas and your, we want to see that um, unique skills and all these coming uh, from you all. Um, I will not take much of your time. Yeah, so um, um, can I say something yeah. quickly? Yeah, just quickly. All right. Um, yeah, so I just want to emphasize um, on the announcement. So whatever video you make, I mean, it follows the various criteria um, Bilal mentioned. Um, you are going to win a prize. So usually it would be a component or it be something that you would be needing for your satellite or to build it. So aside of the, comp uh, the components you'll be giving you, the winning video will actually, um, I mean, have, um, the team will have some components among others. So um, thank you so much.
at all. So more information. So GCRC already has a, I mean, a web page on XP solution, uh, but we will actually launch a new website only for GCRC sometime August or September. So um, that's just to um, add. So thank you. Yeah. And, and, yeah, uh, and then one... finally, finally, sorry, if you are here and then you happen to know anyone you believe can support this campaign, you can always send us an email for us to talk to them. Or you are here, you are, I mean, you have a company or I mean, if for any reason you have a lot of money and you want to support this, you can always get in touch and support us. Thank you. All right, I mean, that was the point that I was just about to say. <laughs> I'm just taking the head out of my mouth. And uh, we also want to say that um, if you are with us and um, maybe your institution, there is no point of contact over there, please kindly get in touch with um, Solomon or just send an email to us. Just let us know and we will support you as much as we can. Okay. All right. So thank you so much. And it's a privilege to host you all and thank you all for. Um, we've spent almost about more than two hours. It's, a, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not easy having you. And please keep on following uh, the Ghana Can Start Rocketry competition. And we will also be there to support you. Please get in touch if you have any questions. See you and stay safe. Okay. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Oh, okay. No, please. Last thing, please. Can you please turn on your cameras? Let's have one full group picture, please. <laughs> Just turn on your cameras. Okay. And uh, Solomon, if you can take a group, uh, a snap. So please, if you can just turn, please, turn on your I'm cameras. sorry, I don't know how to do that. So let me. All right. Um, um, let me I'm, make I'm it sure maybe um, Bla, you can do that for us, right? Um, <laughs> um I'm not sure. I didn't. I didn't think I'm going to try doing this. Um, hold on. Uh, is right. it just taking a screenshot or what? Yeah, yeah, for the screenshot. Yeah, just. Oh, a screenshot. okay. I'll do that. I'll I'll do that. All right, okay. so please okay. um, just turn on your cameras. Let's see your faces just for the pictures, okay? <laughs> so we can share on our social media platforms. Okay, so, okay. Please smile. Okay. Bila, you're smiling too much. <laughs> please okay. let us know when you are done. <laughs> Okay. Let me see if I can. Okay. I think I also got it here. I can do screen. Okay, yeah, okay. Let me go to the next. So please don't go off yet. <laughs> Maybe, maybe somebody can play music. Um, I guess you're done now, right? All right. Thank you so much. And those of you who are interested in joining the development in Africa with radio astronomy training, please kindly get in touch and we will do our best to support you. Stay safe. And please, COVID-19 is real. Uh, I tested positive and I really suffered. So please take good care of yourself <laughs> and let's stay safe. Bye, everyone. Okay, so bye bye everybody. Maybe you can just wave. Bye bye. Thank you. Yeah. Bye -bye. All right. Bye, Dusan. It's nice to have you. Now we got to New York to DC. Red to mail. Safe to swing. Oh, we're looking for the whole. And I'm excited. Solomon, please, can you stop recording now? I still want to record. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs>